Welcome to Family Basics 101. I'm Dr. Bruce McClure, and we will continue our five-part series on family stressors. Today, let's talk about the impact of family stressors. In 2004, a research project completed by the University of Pittsburgh Research Center found that early exposure to stress will have a significant yet varying impact long term on life's future relationships. Let me say that again. The impact, the exposure to stress will have a significant yet varying impact long term on life's future relationships. The study additionally found that adult relationships are even more compounded if similar and more profound stressors continue into adulthood. If the stress started early in life, that's a problem. But if similar stressors continue throughout life, that is a major problem. So the study finds that relationships are going to be compounded with stress and compounded with anxiety if those profound initial stressors replicate themselves over the lifetime of the individual. Secondly, let's look at the impact of those family stressors in the general population. Over 19 million people deal with anxiety disorders annually as a result of stress. If only 30 to 40 percent of this number were connected to families, the impact would be so significant. But every person, all 19 million people who deal with anxiety disorders annually are in fact connected at some level to a family. Let me simplify it. Annually there's a report of 19 million people with anxiety disorder. Those 19 million people are connected at some level to a family. So what you have are 19 million people with anxiety disorders that are in family relationships at some level. That is significant. Imagine being in a community that everyone deals with stress. Dr. Judy Cameron, a scientist at the Oregon Reproductive Science and Neurological Center, found that chronic stress from childhood into adulthood impedes social skills development as well as behavioral development. She looks at some very specific impacts. These problems are manifested through increased anxiety, antisocial behaviors, self-medication, depression, and even suicidal ideations. What Dr. Judy Cameron is simply saying is that the problems that are manifested through an escalation of anxiety overflows into stress and that's going to lend itself into antisocial behavioral disorders, people self-medicating using prescribed uh, medications abundantly, using prescribed medications illicitly, self-medicating through alcohol and other uh, substances like marijuana, cocaine, meth methamphetamines. Stress impacts one's attention focus. Accidents, auto accidents, falls are significantly impacted by stress. It's because of the inattentiveness. Your mind is focused somewhere else. The, the, the body responds the physiological system responds, the psychological system responds, the mood responds to the stressors. Stress impacts one's ability to separate relevant from irrelevant or irrational expectations of others. 
when there's a high amount of stress, the focus will be on, the old cliche was, majoring in minors and minoring in majors. So stress is going to impact one's ability to discern what is really important that my energy needs to be targeted toward, and what are some of those things that I could really take or leave. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 69 through 75, there's a biblical story about a man in stress. His name is Peter. Now, Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Now, we all know that Peter knew Jesus. Peter had said that he would die for him. And now that Jesus has been arrested, and Peter understood the mob mentality, and he saw the torture, and he saw the brutality of, of how that arrest took place. And now he has separated himself, and he's really afraid. He's under stress. His, his anxiety level has escalated. And when he was gone out on the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. His anxiety level is escalating. The stressors are compounding. The first one, he denies it. Then he comes outside and another young lady, another stressor, presents itself. And that escalates the stress level inside of Peter. And then he takes it another step and he says with some very explicit language, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him that stood, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth you. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. Another stressor presents itself, a very specific stressor. More people say, we know that you were with him. Your voice, your language, your, 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 just how you, your mannerisms, everything about you say that you knew Jesus and you were with him. All of these are compounded stressors that are creating and escalating the anxiety and the stress inside of Peter. Let's look at the results of that. Immediately the cock crew, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus which he said unto him, Before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Stress will make a person break. Stress will take all of the energy out of a person. Stress will take the will to move forward away from a person. Stress will cause a person to really hurt on the inside and try to alleviate that pain by any means that are, that's at their disposal. This is a very critical area for every individual spiritually to watch. When we are under pressure, even as Christians, stress will cause a Christian to walk away at some level from the very things they've committed and vowed before God to always stand for. I want you to come back to class again tomorrow when we finalize this five-part series on stress. Don't be late and don't skip class.